How are you today and yesterday and the day before? Because today I'm going to talk about time travel. And most people want to go back in the past rather than go to the future, but some people want to go to the future. But that brings up one of the questions. If time travel is possible, where are the time tourists? You know, where are the people who are going from the future back to visit it? you know, interesting times, or is that we don't live in interesting times? They only go back to certain other times? Or do we have to have a special set of rules? And the answer is clearly, we need a special set of rules because there's gonna be, as well known in science fiction, there's going to be a time protection agency, the chrono force, to prevent people from screwing up the timeline and, and destroying the future. And so that's one of the issues if you have time travel is if you go back in time and you do something that dramatically affects the course of history, is that a good, responsible thing to do? Is that as bad as destroying the environment so that everybody dies? I mean, if, if you change the future that everybody has into a, to a different future, could be worse, could be better, but is that something that people are allowed to do? So that gets to the thing that, you know, the typical thing of the paradoxes of time travel, that it's, uh, you know, the, the classic problem, and that is you travel back in time and by accident or by purpose, you killed your grandfather or grandmother when they were children, long before they could have had your mother and father. What does that mean? The paradox is if you killed them, how did they have your mother and father so they could have you? There's a paradox there in that kind of thing. So there, when you start having time travel, you have many possible paradoxes. However, if you look at general the equations of general relativity to people's surprise, and Godel, was, who was famous for Godel's theorem and so forth, actually found one of the solutions to Einstein's equation that allows, it was a rotating universe, and it allows closed time-like curves. That is, it's possible to have a trajectory that takes you forward in time and then turns around, and takes you back in time, and then comes back on that same loop so that it's a continuous kind of thing. And there are solutions to Einstein's general relativity to do that. They don't look like the universe we see. Again, my own research, and it was one of the strong motivations for me to do research, was to try and measure how much the universe is rotating for, for a different, partly different motivation. And our universe is not rotating from the observations that my team and I have made, it's probably rotated less than a quarter of a turn in its entire history. So that's kind of amazing, you know, it's, uh, but the fact is the universe we live in is a universe that has made it so that space is going out on this plane and time is going perpendicular that way. There's not any closed loop in the system, which makes it extremely unlikely unless you violate a number of conditions of general relativity. There's there's strong uh, equivalence principles and so forth. But you could do it if you could find some material that had effectively negative mass or has very large curvature or something or, or very large defects in the, in the space time itself. And those are things that we have searched for but we haven't seen. Doesn't mean they don't exist, doesn't mean they can't exist. And, uh, but it also means when we look at it carefully that some of these ideas we have for hyperdrives, that is things that let us go faster than light, are pretty much ruled out. And one of the people that I know, one of the Mexican colleagues that I work with, Al Caberi, invented a drive that's theoretically possible on general relativity, but you can look and see that it requires so much energy and so much other things that there's no technology we can imagine or no materials we've ever seen that would allow you to do it, even though in principle, it never goes fast enough the speed light at any local place. It's just you bunch space up, move forward across the bunch up space and then let space go back. But it takes a lot to bunch up space. And the space we appear to live in, and the relic radiation is so smooth and everything, is extremely flat and smooth. And time is going this way and it's hard to, to mix them up and go around. So it seems like time travel in our particular universe is really difficult, but you never know. Somebody might discover some principle or some alien race might have some principle, but 
then you end up with all these paradoxes and all these issues and you have to have either the, the, the chrono force to keep time order or you have to have some additional physical principles that prevent you from destroying the future, that whatever future you have is the future you get. And then you get tangled up in issues about how much free will do you have. And so it's, you don't get off scot-free. <laughs> it's going to be tricky to have time travel.